Nissan's electric LEAF is due for a big upgrade. The LEAF will be revealed on September 6 and is expected to boast a range of 200 miles. Perhaps more importantly, it will be Nissan's first try at a Tesla Autopilot competitor. The 2018 model will feature the company's ProPilot Assist technology, a driver assistance feature meant to take the stress out of highway driving. As a level 2 system, Nissan designed ProPilot to handle stop-and-go traffic on highways, even in situations where it approaches a curve in the road. I tried this system out on a grey Nissan Rogue prototype that I drove along the Hudson Parkway for 45 minutes. ProPilot Assist is powered by a front-forward radar, camera, and sensors. The system relies on clear lane markings to keep the car center on a highway. I took the Rogue out on a rainy afternoon, which poses some challenges. Rain hurts the system's ability to detect the contrast between the lane markings and the road. For that reason, ProPilot Assist will not work in heavy rain when the windshield wipers are on their fastest setting. Thankfully, it wasn't raining too much, so I switched the system on as soon as I merged onto the Hudson Parkway. It's a very easy system to use, simply tap the blue button on the steering wheel and set the desired speed. As expected, ProPilot Assist turned off whenever I hit the brake, but I could fire it up again by pressing the RES button. Whenever ProPilot Assist is turned on, it will first turn on Nissan's Intelligent Cruise Control System. That means the car can handle stop-and-go traffic but it will not try and steer itself. Steering assist won't turn on until the car can detect lane markings, which can take a few seconds or minutes depending on the road. Nissan's intelligent cruise control is a dream. The brake is incredibly smooth. I approached a very irritating and heavy slowdown near the George Washington Bridge and the car gracefully paused during each incessant stop-and-go scenario. I was able to control the amount of space between me and the car ahead. I chose the least amount of space possible, as any respectable New Yorker should, and was pleasantly surprised to see the gap wasn't so large that cars were able to scam ahead of me. It also left enough space that I didn't feel like I was cutting it close, even during harsher stops. As someone who regularly takes the Hudson Parkway to travel across the George Washington Bridge, I'm upset I can't use Nissan's advanced cruise control in all future drives. I have yet to approach that area of the parkway without encountering a major slowdown. Letting the Rogue do all the work was the first time I've approached the bridge without feeling my blood pressure spike. My experience with steering assist was less than ideal, but certainly not poor. When the feature is activated, a display in the instrument cluster will highlight the lanes in green. If it can no longer see the lane markers, it will turn off with a chime until it repositions itself again. Steering assist struggles in scenarios where lane markings are light or even different. I first turned on the system in the left lane, which had a solid yellow lane marker on the left side and dotted white lane markers on the right. Steering assist was unable to detect the yellow lane for most of the test drive, which I was told had to do with the lack of contrast between it and the road. The system definitely fared better in the center lane when the car was surrounded by dotted white lane markers on either side. I wouldn't recommend using cruise control in the speed lane anyway, but it's worth noting that lane detection can be spotty. When steering assist is activated, it handles gentle curves just fine. I could feel the car stir beneath my hands, which was unsettling at first but easy to get used to. When I approached an aggressive curb, however, the car's natural instinct was to go flying forward unless I got at the wheel myself. It is not capable of handling sharp curves on its own. Nissan notes that ProPilot Assist is not a self-driving feature, so drivers are supposed to help the car steer in these kinds of scenarios. But the feature felt a bit wonky and unsure unless the road was completely straight. Generally speaking, I found using steering assist was more stressful than going without it. I constantly had to judge whether or not I should be heavy-handed when intervening or try to let the car work itself out before getting involved. I didn't enjoy that uncertainty. Still, 
I will admit that I was using the feature in a difficult scenario. If I had been cruising down I-95 straight and wide open roads, I imagine the system would have done just fine. I wouldn't bother turning it on while driving on a narrow or curvy highway like the Hudson Parkway. Nissan is careful to ensure drivers don't mistake ProPilot Assist as a self-driving feature. If I let go of the wheel, a warning flashed and the instrument panel with accompanying warning chimes. Those chimes increased in frequency the longer I kept my hands off the wheel. Nissan said if I had kept my hands off the wheel for roughly 30 seconds, the car would have gradually slowed to a stop. That seems like a much better solution than turning the car off altogether. Overall, Nissan's Pro Pilot certainly takes the stress out of driving in heavy traffic. It's not a flawless system, but it's a welcome addition in a mass-market car. Nissan hasn't said how much it will cost, but a spokesperson told me it will be cheaper than Tesla's autopilot system for those looking to transport large families in one car without the soccer mom stigma of a minivan. A full-size SUV is probably the way to go. The new Nissan Armada is one of a few decent acceptable choices as the second-gen big boy received an upgraded platform, making driving the massive truck much easier. Nissan is focusing on improving the interior of the 2018 Armada, which will hit dealerships nationwide on September 1st. The new eight-passenger SUV may feel spacious on the inside, but it's jam-packed with cutting-edge technology and an arsenal of driver assists to make its arguably steep price tag more manageable. Three Albanian Lex Armada trims will come standard with an 8-inch touchscreen Nissan Connect infotainment system featuring a hands-free texting assistant, enhanced voice recognition, HD radio, and lots of USB ports. A new feature of the top trim Armada Platinum is the intelligent rearview mirror, which uses the rearview mirror housing as a screen in conjunction with a high-quality rear-mounted camera to give the driver a crystal clear picture of the road behind them. Think of it as a high-definition reversing camera that's on all the time with a better field of view. Owners can easily toggle between the IRVM and regular mirror via a switch on the housing. The 2018 Armada retains its 5.6-liter, 390-horsepower V8 and 7-speed automatic transmission, but can be had with either rear-wheel or all-wheel drive. These specs allow for a towing capacity of 8,500 pounds. The Armada starts at $45,600, but a fully loaded Armada Platinum with four-wheel drive will cost $61,590. In addition, buyers can choose from a premium package, driver's package, captain's chair package, and optional pearl white paint. A lightly revised 2018 Nissan 370Z has been revealed this week for overseas markets, bringing minor styling changes and a new clutch for manual versions. Changes to the coupe's exterior include black door handles and a new rear bumper fascia, while the head and tail lights get a new dark tint, previously exclusive to the Nismo variant. Other upgrades include new 19-inch alloy wheels, and a new red metallic exterior paint option. Meanwhile, manual versions of the 370Z get a new high-performance clutch from performance brand Exeti, which the company says perfects the downshift, thus reducing driver pedal effort. The 370Z's powertrain remains the same, a 3.7-liter naturally aspirated V6 lives under the bonnet producing 245 kilowatts of power and 363 newton meters of torque. Drive is sent to the rear wheels via a 6-speed manual or 7-speed automatic with paddle shifters. However, the flagship 370Z Nismo goes without the 2018 model year upgrades. Nissan's local arm is unable to confirm if and when we will see the upgraded 370Z range in Australia at this stage. However, it would be logical to assume similar upgrades will be applied to Australian models in the near future. The announcement of this update comes just days after the Australian launch of the 370Z Nismo, 
which has been on sale overseas for a number of years. Throughout the month of August, Tri-City Subaru put into action Subaru of America's corporate initiative Subaru Loves Learning by partnering with Idlehurst Elementary School. Tri-City Subaru was host to a drop-off site where people could donate needed school supplies to benefit Idlehurst Elementary. The campaign was nicknamed Pack and Outback. There was a great response, and a large number of school supplies were donated by Tri-City and many employees, several customers and members of the public. Everything from paper, notebooks, pencils, markers, scissors, glue, backpacks and even items such as packets of googly eyes and sparkles for our classes were donated. To promote awareness for the campaign, 5th grade art students at Idlehurst painted a special canvas banner, which was hung up in the Tri-City showroom. On Tuesday, Tri-City delivered the supplies to Idlehurst just in time for the 2017-2018 school year. Altogether, the back of the Subaru Outback was nearly filled with supplies.